good afternoon everybody. Uh, Bruce McConnell here with Locomotive Systems Training. Uh, first of all, uh, Happy New Year and then hope you had a Merry Christmas. And uh, 2015 is here. So we're going to keep going with what we've got. We're going to almost, we're almost done with uh, a part one, soon to be one on part two. But we're still in FRA Locomotive Inspection, part one continued. This is LSTV-021. Uh, so let's go right into it and let's take a look and see where we left off at. We left off on the air brake equipment. How ironic is that? Because when we get to part two, it's going to be all air brake training. So that's really, really, a lot of, a lot of questions, a lot of... Uh, misunderstandings in the world about air brakes on locomotives, so we'll see if we can straighten some of that out for you. All right, let's talk about an air dryer. An air dryer, let's see what it says here. The purpose of the air dryer is to remove moisture, dirt, rust, oil, and other contaminants from the air, from the air coming in from the air compressor going to the main reservoir system. Uh, very expensive piece of equipment. Uh, it's got a motherboard in there for electronics. It's got three different towers in there. Uh, and again, you'll learn this in the future and how that all works in, in a class designed uh, strictly a standalone for itself. These are the FRA rules that deal with the, the air dryer. And let's go ahead and go to the next one. Let's talk about the defects. And they are, well, number one, and again, from last year, loose or missing fasteners. That's always going to be the first one out there because, remember, it's got a, you need it to be uh, tightly held against whatever it's mounted to. Otherwise, that becomes a defect. Loose or missing fasteners. Moisture indicators, yellow, white, or brown, they should be blue. Now, what I want to do is I really do is back up one slide, and I wanted to point these out to you. And you'll notice right here is a humidity indicator. Right there is one, and there, there is one. And you'll notice in this picture, they're blue, okay? Blue eyes indicate normal operation, okay? If the eyes turn from white to yellow, or white, yellow, and then brown, that means that that means the uh, the towers or the desiccant beds in there have been contaminated and they need immediate attention. So that's what we're referring to from that defect on the next slide. So let's go back to it. Moisture indicators that are yellow, white, or brown, uh, they should be blue. If you have any of those, that means that you need uh, maintenance attention to them right away. Electrical circuit not working properly or at all. Again, I just mentioned moments ago, there's a small... Uh, printed circuit board in there, we call it the motherboard, and you, you, you pull it out, you, you make sure it's not burnt or, or shorted out or anything like that, then you put it back in. Uh, and by the way, just as, as information, they also make in the industry now a air dryer testing unit, okay? You plug it in right to the, to the air dryer, and it cycles the whole thing, checks the electronics for proper operation, and the air dryer for proper operation, really, really slick uh, tool. It's out there in the, in the industry. It's out there in the world. Uh, air leaks. Again, we don't want the air leaks. Remember, we want every every CFM or cubic feet per minute of air that goes through this air dryer to be cleaned and dried, get the moisture out, any oil, any contaminants out of this, so that this component uh, lasts a long, long time. Okay. Uh, accumulations of oil and grease. Again, on the exterior of it, you'll notice. And, and again, I hate to do this to you, but we got to go back one page. And you'll, you may not be able to see this too well, but right here is one tower. Uh, it's called the desiccant tower, and over here is the other desiccant tower. And you'll see in, in real life, they actually are very fine fins uh, that go from the top to the bottom of this desiccant tower. And what fins are, they're like fins on a motorcycle. And what that does, that increases the surface area of the cylinder, or in this case, the desiccant tower. And that's designed to allow air to flow over this and remove a lot of heat. Remember, the air can get heated rather quite, you know, from coming out of the air compressor up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, heated air is a bad thing to have in the air brake system, in the main reservoir. Remember, when I have hot air, as it cools off, it condenses. Again, the byproduct of that is more water, more moisture. And the last thing, or the number one enemy of any air brake system, is moisture. So you'll see these finned areas. These finned areas here are full of dirt, oil, grease, and the air can't get to it to dissipate that heat, then that becomes a defect. Okay, then let's go ahead and go back. All right, uh, any physical damage, any side swipe damage, any damage caused by uh, anything, anything that, can be, that can be struck upon it, anything that can, can uh, like on a side swipe from another locomotive or a car or a building or anything, uh, can cause that to happen. Uh, physical damage. An air dryer not operating properly, again, that motherboard, the electronics aren't working right, then that would be a defect. Remember, and a lot of these uh, air brake systems are dependent upon a properly operating air dryer 
so that they can keep the time intervals set to which the FRA and the railroads have agreed as far as interval of component change out. So the air dryer becomes a very critical key component in the operation of that air brake system. Okay, let's move on to the next one. J1 safety valve. There it is. The purpose of the J1 safety valve is to protect the main reservoir circuit from excessive pressure. Now again, I'm going to point this out. Excessive pressure. That means it doesn't get rid of all the pressure. That gets rid of any pressure, and it says right here, anything greater than 150 pounds or 155 pounds. So here's the FR rules that deal with that. And let's go ahead and come up a little bit. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, defects or air leaks. Nationally, we don't want air leaks. If this thing's leaking, that becomes a defect. Improper, improper operation, venting off at 150 pounds or less. If that is indeed happening, you'll hear this, this uh, J1 safety valve literally, pssst, pssst, pssst. it'll be venting air pressure, and that's letting you know that, hmm, I might have a compressor control problem, cut in, cut out. I might have a defective J1 safety valve, or I might have an obstruction somewhere in my air brake system, or my main reservoir system, excuse me, that is, is making this thing light off. So. This might, this might be the defect or might be something else. In that case, that would be a symptom of the cause. Either way, if this thing's lighting off, you need to find out what the problem is and fix it. Okay, Okay. another big area we're going to talk about today is the fuel tank. Um, <clears throat> it says here, the purpose of the fuel tank is to store fuel for consumption in the diesel engine. The fuel tank is equipped with two fuel fill caps referred to as Snyder caps. Uh, there is one fuel fill cap on each side of the fuel tank of the locomotive located near the end of the tank. The fuel tank is also equipped with a fuel dial gauge on, the, on each side of the tank as well as a fuel sight glass on each side of the tank, both located near the fuel fill opening. The fuel tank is also equipped with a vent. Some fuel tanks are bolted to the frame while other tanks are welded to the frame. And here we have all the FRA rules that deal with the fuel tank. So let's talk about the defects now. Again, loose or missing factors. These are monstrous bolts. But you got to remember, some of these fuel tanks hold up to 5,000 gallons of diesel fuel. And uh, I don't know what the exact weight is per, per, per gallon of diesel fuel, but even if it was just 10 gallons, you know, look at that. That's, that's an awful lot of weight. Uh, I mean, 10 pounds per gallon, that's an awful lot of weight that these fuel tanks are holding up. Okay? So loose or missing fasteners. Uh, accumulation of oil and or grease on the fuel tank. Remember, the FRA really looks at anything that can create a possibility of a fire. They also look at slips, trips, or falls. Okay, So those are the big criteria that the FRA looks at when it comes to accumulation of oil and or grease on the fuel tank. Uh, fuel leaks. Um, any, f any connection where the fuel goes in or out of the fuel tank. A fuel leak is a, definitely is an FRA reportable. Cracked walls, we mentioned up above. Some of these fuel tanks are welded to the frame. If you gotta look at those walls and make sure those walls aren't cracked. If they're cracked in any way, shape, or form, then you need to go back and write that up as an FRA defect. But I also want to mention one thing too. These fuel tanks also have a secondary locking device on them. Uh, most of them do, and what that means is is that in the event, say I were to lose a uh, a mounting bolt came loose, or if the bolt broke, instead of that fuel tank dropping down onto the track. Uh, which would be a, a, a horrible, horrible thing, instant derailment to say the least. Um, what would happen is, is those outer uh, safety, safety platforms are down to catch that fuel tank, prevent it from actually dropping onto the rail. That's why you always want to make sure that when you look at this fuel tank, you want to make sure that a little gap between those uh, safety stop brackets. Okay, really, really important. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, and this is again, okay, this is fuel fill cap. <clears throat> we mentioned from the previous slide that each locomotive is equipped. We call these a Snyder cap. And we do the reason we do that, that's the name of the company. It says it right on there, Snyder Locomotive. Uh, the purpose of fuel fill cap provide a physical connection from a fuel hose at a fueling station to the fuel tank. The fuel fill cap is often referred to as a, again, Snyder cap. As the name can be clearly seen on the red cover. The plastic hose, which is this guy right here. That goes from the fuel tank to the fuel filler, and that can use it as a sensing device to ensure proper shutoff of the fuel when the tank is full. Okay? And again, there's the FRA rule, FRA rule that deals with the equipment in located on this picture. And let's take a look at the defects. Loose or missing cap. Physical damage to the filler neck or groove, which is located behind the cap. It's a long neck that just goes down to weld it into the uh, top of the fuel tank. <clears throat> Physical damage to the filler neck or groove. That happens quite often. Uh, just 
from normal wear and tear, uh, taking the cap on, taking it off, putting the fueling hose on, taking the fueling hose off, uh, these components actually wear in there and they need to be looked at and, and reported if they are either A, worn or B, broken or, or defective. A loose filler neck, okay, that can do it. Sometimes, because a filler neck actually gets, is a th big, great big, I think it's about a four inch pipe that actually gets threaded into the big filler neck that goes into the tank. Sometimes it will actually get loose. You want to check for that. Uh, fuel fill cap chain or cable missing, which is this little guy right here. When you take that cap off and it drops down, it shouldn't fall off of that cable or chain onto the ground. It should be retained by that cable or chain. Uh, plastic sensing hose is cracked, loose, or twisted. Okay, you want to make sure that hose has a nice arch to it, and you want to, you'll also see if it's twisted, it'll be have a spiral-looking effect in this hose. Uh, so you don't want that at all. Okay. All right, let's go ahead then to the next one. Okay, uh, the fuel sight glass. The purpose of the fuel sight glass is to indicate the fuel level in the fuel tank. There's no moving parts in there. It's strictly based on as the fuel goes, gets filled into the tank, uh, fuel when it gets right about to this level, which is probably about three-fourths full, fuel will begin to show in the sight glass. And right near the top, right about here, is where we normally fill those tanks out, up to. Uh, remember, we allow approximately 10% for expansions, so they're never really completely full. Um, so, but it indicates a fuel level. And let's, this is the FRA rule that deals with the fuel sight glass. And let's talk about the defects. Loose or missing fasteners. Again, these screws come loose. The gasket uh, gets, uh, you know, there's not enough pressure from the loose screws. It'll leak fuel out of there. Or if we had a side swipe, I've seen that happen where it's completely taken, sheared all the, the screws off and the sight glass is completely gone. So again, that obviously would be a defect. Uh, fuel sight glass that is cracked or leaking. I've seen those cracked. I've seen those leaking. Again, if it's leaking, fuel. Remember, any fuel leak is a federal defect. And number three, any physical damage to the sight glass or also the mounting bracket behind it, So, which we've already talked about. <clears throat> all right, fuel tank vent. All of our fuel tanks on all our locomotives are vented to atmosphere. Okay? The purpose of the fuel tank vent is to allow the air in the fuel tank to expel as the fuel tank is filled. The fuel tank also, the fuel tank vent will also allow air to be drawn into the tank as the fuel level drops. So if I start with a full tank of fuel, and as I go down the track and the fuel, the fuel, the fuel level in the fuel tank drops, air is drawn in as the fuel gets lower and lower. So I have two components in the fuel tank at all time. I have air on top of the fuel, and naturally I have fuel in the bottom of the tank. Okay. And then as the locomotive goes into a servicing facility and we hook up a, a fuel hose to it and as I put the, the fuel back in it, the air is displaced and goes out of the tank through the vent, which is located right here and located right here. So as it's continual, as the fuel goes in, the air goes out. As the fuel goes down, the air moves in. Okay? All right, so these are the, the FRA rules that deal with it. And let's, let's take a look at the defects. Once again, loose or missing fasteners. I have clamps here. I have connection points here. Wherever there's a connection point or a, or a clamp, if the clamp is loose, that becomes a defect. Any physical damage, you know, if this pipe is crushed, if it's, if it's bent, uh, I mean, it's not, it has a natural curve, but if it was slammed into something, you know, these locomotives get in some really weird uh, conditions. You have to look at them and be open to anything and everything. Uh, fuel tank vent pipe plugged. And, I, and, this, and I've run across this here with debris, snow, shop towels, dirt, or mud. We had a locomotive that came into our shop one time and we were having a fuel delivery problem. Fuel delivery problem. Fuel that kept from coming back reported. And uh, we had a fella take a, an injector bar and we we're trying to check to find out whether or not there was any debris in this line. And what had happened one, was a while back that locomotive had actually derailed and gone on the ground. What wasn't known was at the time was about that much of that tube, which this tube was actually close to the bottom of the fuel tank, had actually filled up with mud and then it dried. So he's standing poking on this and as is, chunks of dirt are coming out of the bottom of this pipe. And he literally went in probably about that far with that injector bar before the final rest of it just kind of fell out. Hmm, interesting. So who'd have ever thought things like snow or ice or a shop towel or dirt or mud can get in there. Remember, if the air can't get in, right, it's not going to work right if the air can't get out. It's not going to work right. Good thing to know. Once again, loose or cracked or missing pipe clamps. Okay? All defects. 
All right, fuel tank bolts and mounting brackets. The purpose of fuel tank bolts and mounting brackets are firmly, and the key word is there is firmly, to hold the fuel tank in place against the bottom of the frame of a locomotive. Now, I'm going to step into the picture just a little bit because I want to point this out. This guy right here, and this, you can't see it behind this other bracket, but these are the main bolts that hold the fuel tank to the bottom of the locomotive frame. These bolts sometimes get loose. These bolts and nuts sometimes get loose. Sometimes they'll even break. Okay, the bolt, the, the nut and, the, and the, that remainder of that bolt will be on, and all you have will be a sheared portion of that bolt there. You have to look at all these to make sure that number one, they're there, and number two, that they are tight. Okay, so if they're loose or missing, they have to have the tension. I also mentioned that from a previous slide about the gap between the safety bracket and the fuel tank, and it's right here. I got two big bolts that bolt to the bottom of this to this big block here welded to the frame. And you can't see it very well, but right in there is about a quarter inch gap between the top of that block and the bottom of that locomotive frame. Excuse me, not the locomotive frame, the fuel tank frame right here. This whole bracket here is all part of the fuel tank frame. So I normally have two big bolts that hold it up, but in this case, if either, either of these bolts fail or both fail, instead of that fuel tank dropping onto the rail, causing who knows what kind of damage and destruction, this, this retainer, this safety bracket, the fuel tank will drop down a quarter inch and then stop. But you always want to look, because every now and then you're going to find one where that fuel tank bracket is sitting on top of that safety stop. That becomes a defect. Okay? Um, defects are loose or missing fasteners, cracked wells in the mounting bracket, loose or missing bolts in the safety bracket. Okay? A lot of stuff to look at here. Okay. The next slide is the emergency fuel cutoff button. Emergency fuel cutoff, it even says it right on the locomotive. And it's this little red button, I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's an opening here and there's a, there's a kind of a rubber tip cushion over that button to keep dirt and debris and junk out of it. But let's take a look at it. The purpose of the emergency fuel shutoff button is to provide railroad personnel a fast and simple way to shut the locomotive down in any type of emergency. It could be a locomotive fire, it could have been an overspeed, it could have been a fuel leak or an oil leak or whatever the problem would be then you had to shut that or a fueling leak. If you had to shut that locomotive down instead of having to stop what you're doing, run up the locomotive, run down and grab hold of the lay shaft to shut the engine down, all you got to do is push that button. There's one located on each side near the fueling station where that Snyder cap is at. There's one on each side. Okay, They have to be tested to make sure they work too. Okay. Uh, this is the rules that, that fall under it. Defects. Emergency fuel shutoff button does not shut the locomotive down when pushed. The switch inside that button could be bad. That'd be an electrical job. Okay. The emergency fuel shutoff button cover is torn or missing. Sometimes, the, uh, just from use, that cover will get ripped or torn open. Okay. If it's ripped or torn, that becomes a defect. You allow water, dirt, moisture, all that stuff to get in there, and that would shorten the life of that switch or that button in there. <clears throat> the, emer the, uh, the emergency fuel shutoff button is jammed in the in position. Uh, you know, a piece of wood may have been jammed in there. D d uh, dirt. Uh, dirt's a really good killer of that. You know, dirt and debris can hang up a lot of stuff, a lot of components, where it'll get in there and it'll hold that button in, which means if that button is pushed in and held in, that means that you'll never get that locomotive started. That's a good thing to know from an electrical standpoint. And also number four, decals, labels that are not readable. If you cannot read this, that in and of itself becomes a FRA reportable. Okay? All right, so here is the FRA website. It is www.fra.dot.gov. Okay? There is the FRA website. And this is the second video of the new year. And uh, pretty soon, I know everybody's wanting to hurry up and get to the air brake stuff. We'll get there pretty quick. But go to that website, check it out. A lot of good information on there. And again, Merry Christmas. Hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And again, go to our website, lst-ca.com. That's lst-ca.com. Thank you and see you next week.